a historical market town, proud to have influenced some of the most captivating and enduring tales ever told. Stratford-upon-Avon has many of its own stories, entwined with murder and mystery, love and loss. Make yourself comfortable as we explore some of the ghost stories here in haunted Stratford. Shreve's House is one of the oldest buildings here in Stratford. It's also considered one of its most haunted. Not much is known about the building's namesake, William Shreve, other than he was an archer for King Henry VIII and was gifted the house for his services to the crown. The trees resided in the house here for only a few years on Sheep Street, from 1536 to 1542, before disappearing from the records under mysterious circumstances always a risk when close to the king. Of course, Sheep Street would have looked and smelt a lot different back then, with the unsanitary mudded roads hosting cattle markets. Through the centuries, Shreve's house would endure fires, plague, and civil war, bestowing the building with a rich and well-documented history, much of which is on display as the Tudor World Museum in the property's barn. Besides the many artifacts and recreations of the area's darker times, the building is notorious for its motley crew of spirits. Hair pulling, unexplained noises and cold spots are often reported by staff and guests. Though some of the most disturbing recurring phenomena is an intense feeling of being smothered by what feels like an unseen hand and a stabbing pain in the abdomen. And while there are numerous ghosts said to haunt the building, there are some particularly interesting cases that we can begin to piece together throughout the property. The ship room as you ascend the stairs is a potent hotspot for activity. The room where guests have felt a stabbing sensation and an oppressive feeling of unease, perhaps with a link to a murderous serial killer. As the story goes, John Davies, a well-to-do knife salesman, was living in the house. Though when it was discovered that he had abruptly fled the country, a shocking revelation was uncovered by the landowner. Evidence of the murder of up to 20 young women, even keeping body parts as trophies of his exploits. It's said that if you smell bad breath or stale beer while in the museum, you may be in the presence of John. But tread carefully, as he's known to follow home those who he takes a shining to. Throughout the first floor exhibits, the apparition of a young girl is known to appear primarily to children and mothers. Around seven years old, and with gaunt, malnourished features, young Lucy was a poor local street urchin. Surviving as a skilled pickpocket, young Lucy was known to frequent the building during its time as a tavern, thieving from the wealthy clientele. She'd meet her untimely demise, however, when she became trapped in the tavern during a great fire. Her burnt body was found and sold to a local doctor for dissection in an under-the-table deal. Though it appeared the spirit of Lucy may be unaware of her fate, as guests often report their clothing and jewellery being tugged at from knee-high. Though the building's traumatic past is well documented, there's little in the way of evidence to validate these particular stories. Potentially embellish scary tales, or could these spirits be indicative of the sinister truth? A place that really bookended Shakespeare's life, the Holy Trinity Church saw both the baptism and the burial of the Bard. As the oldest building in Stratford, with origins dating back to 1210, its grand church sits on the banks of the peaceful river Avon. Though a beautiful church and worthy tribute to the Shakespeare family, it's no stranger to restless spirits. During the 1600s, it was common for the remains in the chapel to be exhumed after ten years of rest to make room for the newly deceased. But what was to be of the exhumed remains? They would be carried out the chapel door, laid in a pile, and burned to bone fire. Shakespeare, uneasy with the idea of his rest being interrupted, bestowed a curse inscribed upon his tomb for all to see. Good friend, for Jesus' sake forbear, to dig thy dust enclosed here. Blessed be thy man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones. Though a stark warning, scans of the gravesite do suggest tampering towards the head end, and evidence indicates that trophy hunters may have stolen Shakespeare's skull in the late 1700s and replaced it with that of a female. A more recent but nonetheless chilling occurrence here, the apparition of Olive Bennett. On a Saturday night in 1954, Olive was accosted and strangled to death by an unknown assailant. In a seemingly improvised act of desperation, 
The killer used Olive's scarf to lash her lifeless body to an uprooted tombstone from the graveyard and plunged her into the River Avon. It's said that the apparition of Olive can be seen standing in the river, seemingly beckoning passers-by under the moonlight. Her killer was never found. The inspiration behind the 1963 film The Haunting and the 1959 novel Haunting of Hill House it's apparent that Ettington Park is no ordinary hotel. This neo-Gothic 19th century mansion sits just six miles from the centre of Stratford and has an extensive and varied history. A manor house has occupied the estate long predating the mansion that stands today. Residence to the Shirley family from the 10 hundreds until it was extensively remodelled in the late 18 hundreds. This past life evidenced in the remnants of the Norman style church dating to 1198, housing the family mausoleum. When it comes to the hauntings here, Ettington Park is a bit of everything. Whether it be the faint disembodied wailing heard through the corridors at night, or candles levitating from mantelpieces, staff and guests have reported an incredible array of paranormal experiences. Perhaps a remnant of its Victorian heritage, an elderly woman in period clothing has been sighted roaming areas of the house, along with the apparition of a man and his dog crossing over into the library. Rumoured to be the apparition of a member of the Shirley family, Edward Shirley, once spotted disappearing in the blink of an eye. Accompanying these full-bodied apparitions, we have Lady Emma, a woman in a long flowing white dress, placed walking the hallways at night and overlooking the terrace at dusk. In 1979, the house was badly damaged during a fire. Upon clearing debris from the empty building, workers noticed Lady Emma observing them from the first floor window. Understandably concerned that this person needed help, their search for the curious Emma was ultimately unfruitful. She disappeared without a trace. I think it's fitting we complete our journey here at the picturesque cottage where the true love story of William Shakespeare and his wife Anne came to be. Anne Hathaway's childhood home stands today as a beautifully preserved ode to the enduring legacy of one of our most cherished literary figures, tucked away from the enormous gravity and influence of his art. Built as a farmhouse in 1463, as the Hathaway family grew, so did the house, with additions being made through the centuries into the cottage we see today. Though beyond the quaint facade and historical importance of this building, there appears to be something peculiar going on in the Anne Hathaway cottage. A woman in a long dress is often spotted wandering the upstairs bedrooms. It's not uncommon to catch a glance as you pass by, a woman as she glides past the windows, despite the building being locked after hours. Visitors have reported a female voice humming a melody, at times so close a breath can be felt, perhaps the voice of the lady in the window. The cottage is also known to host poltergeist activity. A chair denoted with the bard's initials is said to move during the night of its own accord. Move the chair and you'll find that it's returned to its original position overnight, as if in use at the desk. The cottage's bible, encased in glass, has also been seen opening on its own. The ghost stories of this iconic town really pay homage to its unmatched character and charm. Every cobbled lane with its secrets, and devoted Stratfordian, passionate to share them. To quote the man himself, hell is empty, and all the devils are here. <laughs>